Hey everybody, I'm Nancy. My channel is Square Pillow Isn't Square. It's the place where you will find tips, tricks, advice, suggestions, tutorials, anything you wanted to know about home deck sewing. Today we're going to talk about one of my pet peeves, which is pillow flanges that are floppy. Um, I'm going to show you how to take an already made pillow sham. In fact, this is one that I made for myself. Um, and you'll see that I tried to take a little shortcut and it failed. And so I have a floppy flange. Floppy flanges really make me nuts. They defeat the entire purpose of a sham, which is to stand up, to look beautiful, and to help cover the sleeping pillows that are normally behind these, leaning against your headboard. So here's what a flange is supposed to look like and what it's supposed to do, cover the pillow and stand up nicely. Um, but the ones you buy in the store, as well as ones that can be made like this, just flop over and look terrible. And here's our limp floppy flange, all flopped over to the back. You can't even see it, but you do see the bed pillow behind it with the wrinkled pillowcase, not what you want to see. So I'm going to show you how to take a ready-made basic pillow sham with that, nothing with fancy cording in the trim but a basic uh, pillow sham like this with a flange and turn it from this into this where it will always hold itself up look beautiful and also still wash and dry well without any of this supporting padding that's inside losing its shape or moving around where it doesn't need to go. So let's do it. If you've got a pillow sham like this, the easiest thing to do is to take out the stitching that actually creates the border right here. So we're going to take that stitching apart. We should be able to turn the entire pillow wrong side out. Okay, so here we have our, our pillow sham. We've taken out all the stitching. I'm going to pull out all my threads, make it nice and tidy. And um, I'm going to go ahead and press this just so I know that I have a nice a uh, square, flat, or rectangular, flat, even um, product to start with. I'm going to just flip it over. This side I um, have a piece of lining on the back of the front fabric and that was because the pillow that I was covering initially um, actually had like a dark purple design on it and I wanted to make sure that didn't show through um, and I actually thought well maybe just having the lining on there would give it enough extra body where my flange wouldn't flop over but I was wrong um, so this is a really good example to show you that even a nice extra layer of lining uh, to face the back of that pillow front really didn't do anything to keep my flange from being floppy. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it right, which is what I probably should have done in the first place. But I tend to take shortcuts on my own stuff, what I would never do with the customers, and this was an example of that. So we're going to just make sure this is nice and ironed on both sides. First thing you're going to need is a layer of quilt batting. Um, what I happen to have in my studio 
right now I don't actually have any quilt batting, but what I do have is what's called cushion wrap. This is a, a thick Dacron um, padding that's used to wrap foam cushions when you make window seat cushions or chair cushions. Um, but it's a little bit too thick, so I this is uh, actually something that you can peel the layers apart. But what you want is maybe about a half inch thick quilt batting. And this one, as you can see, has some nice body to it. It's, it's kind of stiff, and that's what you want. In fact, if you like a really padded look, you can actually use something this thick. But I'm going to go ahead and take about half of this thickness off of my cushion wrap. Um, and I'm going to cut out a piece just slightly bigger than my existing sham. So I'm going to go do that. We are going to take a scrap piece of lining. This actually this is a nice weight lining. I think it's probably the lining I used to face it in the first place. Um, this is a good way to use any leftover lining you have from a project. Um, or if you go to the fabric store, a lot of times the, the Home Deck fabric stores will have a remnant section. And this is, uh, and you'll find lots of small pieces of lining on sale, on clearance. And this is a really good way to use that kind of that kind of fabric. So here's a scrap of lining. We're going to put the lining down first. Then we're going to take our quilt batting and we're going to put that on there. And now we're going to take our pillow sham. And as you can see, I cut everything just a little bit too big because it's just way easier to cut something down than to try and make it fit exactly. So I'm going to even this all out. Okay. Now that that's all nice and flat and even, and I've got my three layers, the next thing I'm going to do is pin all three layers together and I'm just going to baste or stitch along to get to catch all three layers together. Alright, let's go sew it. Alright, I have basted this on the edge, just about a quarter of an inch away from the edges. This is what it looks like. You know, as you can see, don't forget that you're going to do this with your back, your closure side facing up. Um, and then this is what it looks like on the other side. And now that that's all secure, my layers aren't going to go anywhere if this is washed and dried. And you are just going to trim this all down. To the original size of the finished sham. Alright, now we will turn it right side out. And now as you see, when you open up your pillow sham to put your pillow in, your batting is protected by this nice layer of lining so you're not going to rip or tear or mess up your batting in any way because it's got a nice it's now it's nice and lined and protected and so the next thing we're going to do is just give this a light press closed Giving this a nice, uh, a nice light steam press to kind of relax everything and flatten all my layers out. And the last thing you'll do is, I mean, I can actually still see my stitching line, um, but you will mark your two-inch border, 
and you'll stitch all the way around it on the outside. Now if you want to, you can mark this with um, a disappearing ink pen or a, a piece of white chalk. Um, however, I actually normally just measure my two inches. Now in this case, um, I have stripes, so I don't even have to measure. I can just follow one of the stripes all the way down. But normally, you just would measure in your two inches, and I actually use my pins as my stitching guide. And in this case, it's really easy because I can just follow this stripe, at least along these vertical lines. I'll just do that all the way around. Measure my two inch border. Short form. And I'm going to just use my pins as my sewing guide. Take this to the machine and top stitch it. But before I go, actually sometimes another thing that I'll do, just to make sure my back stays in place, is I will just pin, pin this, um, this overlap flap closed where I'm going to be stitching. That way it won't get pushed or moved or not be in the right spot on the back where I can't see it when I'm sewing. All right, let's go sew. I tend to stop and start in what will be my center, center bottom. And I'm gonna do kind of a long stitch, maybe, maybe three. And another thing I'll do is I'll back tack really strongly where this overlap is because that's a stress point. That's what you pull apart when you're stuffing your pillow in and out and you don't want it to rip. So those two points where the fabric overlaps, I can feel the other one here. When I get there, I'm going to give it a good back tack, make it nice and strong. And when you have a lot of layers like this, it's really good to just press down and try to keep it from shifting the best you can. Alright, let's go put our pillow in and see what we've got. So here we have our finished sham. As you can see, it looks beautiful. It looks very high-end custom. It will hold its shape through washing, drying, multiple use. Um, and uh, then I'm going to make a video right after this one uh, where I'm going to show you how to make this from scratch. If you don't have one that you can already have that you just want to fix and you want to make one from scratch, we're going to do that next. Um, thanks for being here. Please subscribe to my channel if you like this video. I have lots of other useful information and videos on here with a lot more to come. So thanks for watching and happy sewing.